There is grief and frustration in Texas as the first funeral services are being held in Uvalde for the victims of last week's school shooting. Family. Oh no, not again. I turned and looked and there was a I think man with a short, bulletproof dead, seven jacket people on. Wounded many the trajectories. Chris Korolnik is a former Marine and active shooter expert. And I do believe that there's a conversation to be had about the Second Amendment or about guns, and that's fine. But we can't have a binary discussion without discussing mental health. We can't have another discussion without talking about response. And I am not talking about hardening schools. I agree with you completely. What I am saying is we need to start hardening and understanding what happened. We haven't lost a child in a school fire in 63 years because we created this giant metric to respond and prevent fires. We can respond and prevent active shooters. A Fox News alert for you now. 14 people now dead and 17 wounded after two heavily armed gunmen burst into a social services center in San Bernardino, California. Motive now is still undetermined, but the FBI is not ruling out terrorism. Since 2002, more than 70,000 law enforcement officers have learned how to respond in active shooter situations, according to one training center. So how prepared are officers in an emergency such as this one. Joining us now is Marine Corps veteran and active shooter prevention expert and former officer with the McKinney, Texas Police Department. Chris Grolneck joins me now. Good morning to you, sir. I sat down with Chris Grolneck, a leading expert on attack avoidance and prevention, and I discussed the San Bernardino shooting with him and the possibility of an ISIL directed versus an ISIL inspired attack. If it was an ISIS directed attack, uh, and we still don't know factually if it was or not, but let, let's just go out on a limb and say it was not because we don't have all the information. So if, if it was a directed attack, they would have uh, weapons pre-placed, ammunition pre-placed, money put in accounts, uh, facilities and people behind the scenes, kind of like technicians helping them run their operation. <laughs> In the mass killings recently at the Washington, D.C. Navy Yard, police response was considered extremely fast. Within seven minutes, had officers at the building. That's half the time of the national average response, but 12 people still died. And from what we know about the horrific school shootings at Sandy Hook in Connecticut, the movie theater shootings at Aurora, Colorado last year, and even going all the way back to Columbine, security consultant Chris Grolnick says time is of the essence for officers arriving on the scene because so much carnage can happen so fast. And he says the first officer on the scene, if he or she is alone, is expected to wait for help. To respond once your backup arrives and use a contact cover approach so you're not on a suicide mission. A terrifying sense of deja vu followed by relief yesterday at the Washington Navy Yard. There is a very heavy local and federal police response to reports of a possible shooting at the complex. Thankfully, no evidence of any shooting was ever found. Uh, we're going to take a look, though, at the response now with a security specialist who is also a former law enforcement officer. Chris Brolnick is co-founder of the threat response team CGPGMG. He joins us now by Skype from Dallas. Thank you, sir, so much for uh, getting up for us this morning. We appreciate it. You bet. Good morning to you. So as you can imagine here in Washington, there's a lot of talk about the response yesterday. And perhaps the first question everyone is asking is, uh, was it efficient or was it an overreaction? That's a really good question to start. Um, I think the response was excellent, um, highly um, sufficient, extremely coordinated. I think Chief Lanier from DC did an incredible job with uh, her emergency response plan something called NIMS that we follow in the industry, National Emergency Management System. And it looks like it was coordinated very well and everything came together at an exceptional level. All right, after a series of deadly mass shootings, the Justice Department wants to change the way police respond to active shooters. Some law enforcement officials say that current training is simply out of date and that changing it could save lives. See I do want to bring in Chris Grolnick. He is with the Active Shooter Prevention Project to talk a little bit more about these shootings. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks so much for having me. What goes through your mind every time you hear about another one of these shootings? Because now, earlier today, we learned about the one in Yakima, Washington, and the search that is ongoing for a suspect. Yeah, Josh, I th thank you very much. I think it's a little bit um, disconcerting sometimes, especially for us, where you know we are in the murder business. We are, we know, we do study the application of violence and how it works. But really, we're in the prevention business. For about 13 years, the experts that we've uh, got together 
are number one in their different disciplines, whether it's speaking, teaching, preaching, uh, whatever, but mostly it's about prevention, response, and options. And I think the frustrating part is when we got started in 2007 and then I was involved in active shooter in 2010, got my academic uh, thesis written on the phenomenon of active shooters, and I started researching run, hide, fight. It's a great model. Sometimes it's an empty vessel though. So we need to look beyond that and kind of populate those three words because they're supposed to be similar to stop, drop, and roll. But unfortunately, if we run, we need to know where we're running. If we're hiding, we need to know where to hide. And if we're gonna fight, we need to make sure we have something more than a crayon and a five-year-old. 